everyone, welcome to the Paw Awareness Podcast, and thanks for joining me. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube, and also check us out at pawawareness.org and on Instagram at pawawareness underscore official. On Instagram, we are doing submissions for Pet of the Week, where you can submit your foster pet and we'll pick one winner every month and we'll give $200 to their choice of charity or foster. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy this episode. Hey everyone and welcome to today's episode of the Paw Awareness Podcast. Today I have Josh Leverett. He's a dog trainer and host of Netflix Canine Intervention and he's worked with some top name celebrities such as Kevin Hart, Steph Curry, and Jason Derulo. I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce yourself and a little bit about you and what it is that Canine Intervention is. Okay, how's it going, man? Thanks so much for having me on your show. You know, basically, uh, just a dog guy. You know, uh, I had a passion for dogs since a child. You know, I had Cocker Spaniels from as the earliest dogs I can remember, actually. Uh, we had a dog named Simba when I was probably two, three years old, right? But then we had my own dogs were Cocker Spaniels, and I later on... Um, rescued uh, some Cocker Spaniels, then I got into uh, some pit bulls and, uh, you know, learned a lot over the years, worked with horses, trained with horses, learned a lot from that. So just a lot of time working with animals over the years. And uh, in the last 10 years, you know, I started uh, Cali Canine or California Canine Solutions, where we specialize in socialization and behavior modification. Uh, I've worked with the San Jose Police Department, Santa Clara County Sheriff, working with dogs, fixing, you know, helping the handlers, helping dogs, fixing problems. You now I've just been fixing behavior in San Jose and Silicon Valley for the last 11 years. Uh, you know, and basically uh, we got a, approached by someone who was interested in, uh, you know, seeing if we were interested in a show and, you know, went down there and, you know, made my pitch and they liked it. And, I, you know, just a shot canine intervention and having a great time. Yeah. What's that like? I mean, getting to impact so many people, like what's been that feedback like um, with your show and just being able to get your system out? What has that felt like to you and what kind of feedback have you seen? It's been pretty amazing. I mean, to get people from all over the world just saying like how things are already helping their situation, just the, the knowledge and just all of the, the tips and just the, the nuggets that they walk away from. It just... You know, it's been crazy, crazy uh, response from all over the world. I mean, we have Brazil and Italy and UK and, of course, the States, you know, um, all through Europe. And just it's been really cool. You know, and a lot of people need help. You know, they, they, they're they just like these people on the show and they're calling me like desperate for help. Like, man, I have this dog and I this and that. I need you so bad. And, you know, our or my system really works on, you know, getting the solid foundation of uh, engagement and focus and motivation. And then we start working on some different static behaviors and, and you know, starting to teach familiarization and socialization. And what happens is the dogs are able to get more and more comfortable through this five pillar system I have of obedience, agility, um, agility, behavior mo- management, uh, problem solving technique, as well as socialization. And all of this is gonna, you know, pretty much for all dogs, they all need it. You know, some dogs, they just have obedience or certain dogs are just getting socialized or certain dogs are just doing agility or certain people are just trying to fix the behavior or, you know, correct behaviors. Like you need all five of these to work in sync. And this is what my system is all about. It's about, you know, really understanding the temperament of dog you have and, 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 you know, basically maximizing the potential of your dog. Something I personally could relate to because I have this little old dog and he is, been in and out of the system for a while and he has so many temperament issues so i feel like i've learned a lot from your show but what i wanted to ask you was i know that you mentioned somewhere and i forget what uh where i heard it at but you mentioned the 16 dimensions of temperament and how you kind of relate that to uh your your dog training system is there one dimension that you see that you focus on more or is it just all 16 are equally as important to understand well, you have to take a lot of things into consideration, right? So I'm going to name off 16, um, or maybe I can just come up with. Uh, so anyway, indoor, outdoor activity level, vigor and intensity, emotional stability, behavior consistency, sociability with people, strangers or family members, dominance with people, dominance with dogs, uh, learning rate, problem solving, uh, learning obedience, guard dog ability, watch dog ability, territoriality. And uh, let me see, I think I got them all there, maybe. (laughs) All of those being considered, like each one of those things, you know, it's like a dog is a certain amount of territoriality means he's going to have a certain, you know, domain. This is mine. Don't come around here. And that's going to make up for the reasons why he's doing what he's doing. 
you know, uh, certain doesn't have certain activity level. That's going to be the reason why they're getting in so much mischief and, and tearing up stuff. And, you know, have dogs that are watch dog ability. You know, they might be a little bit on the nervous side, but they're great. They're not going to let anybody come on your property. So dogs were bred to be a certain way over these years. Right. And they've been all mixed up to do different things over the years. And now people just have dogs, you know, and a lot of people don't care. They're not using them as functional tools like they once were. Right. So now you have dogs that have temperament and characteristics but the handlers need to understand what kind of characteristics these are and understand that certain dominant behaviors can get out of hand and it can create problems and create danger for, you know, certain people or certain dogs or whatever. So you have to just address all these issues and look and understand what is the worst case scenario. You know, a lot of times people think best case scenario, they kind of stay naive about what the dog, you know, could potentially do say, Oh, he's so perfect like this. Or my last dog was just like him. And he's like this. And it's like, no, no, no. Got to look at what we see. And one thing I'm not afraid to point out is say, Hey, this is what we're looking at and wake up and smell the coffee. Otherwise you're going to have a problem. And in a place like we live in California, you know, you get sued for stuff, you know, your dog, you can go to jail for certain stuff. So you have to make sure that you're, you know, get, keeping it real with people and really getting to the nitty gritty. So if they want to change, like don't waste my time if you're not really to make the changes. Because those things, most of those changes are about the handler uh, changing things and the consistency in the handler. A lot of people are not disciplined. A lot of people are not consistent. A lot of people are not, you know, black and white with things. And then this is where there's a lot of up and down. And that happens with the dogs. And, you know, and then the dogs have to lose because of the person not being responsible or not. You know, anytime people letting their dog off, you know, around the wrong dog or letting them, let them get out or, you know, these type of things is never the dog's fault. It's just like people not really, you know, taking the mat, taking the, taking matters serious. Yeah. I heard you say that somewhere too. That's really cool. You're like, it's never the dog's fault. It's just the owner's fault. And basically, you know, you also, well, it's, not you, that it's their fault. They're uninformed, uninformed. Yeah, exactly. The information that people are receiving, even amongst, you know, there's so much dog training information and dog trainers are always stabbing each other in the back because everybody wants to be you know, the best on top. And it's, you know, it's not about the fact that having the proper information. And, and most of the time, the guys who really know what they're doing can look at a situation and most people can come to an agreement on certain things. It's all those people who are kind of like the sideline trainers, the people who just started training and they think they got it all figured out or they're listening to this person, that person. Like, I've been doing this for over 10,000 hours. You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't trained, you know, that many dogs, then I don't really, you know, it's kind of hard for me to, really take what you're saying your opinion about you know is valid so i think that it just comes down to acknowledging what we're looking at and you know dealing with it correctly yeah and i know that you you know it's like about training these people too that you talk about how you train these people too and what are some common mistakes I, you kind of talked about it uh when you said you know maybe not as disciplined enough but what are some common mistakes that you see people make with their dogs right is there just something that kind of jumps out to you um, I know you kind of mentioned lack of discipline a little bit. No, lack of engagement. You know, it's not okay. even so much. You can't have discipline until you get them engaged and tell them what to do. So a lot of times people think like, oh, because you're a balanced trainer, because you make corrections, like all the man, you just come in just pistols blazing. It's like about teaching the dog, going through a learning phase, reps, 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 positive, 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 positive. positive. And the thing is about having this engagement and having the desire, the dog has the desire to want to work with you. You know, they need to be engaged with your treats. They need to understand your food. They need to understand your toys. They need to understand all of these different things that you have to keep them engaged and keep them, you know, um, you know, motivated. So basically, you know, our whole goal is to figure out what dog you have and then tap into what's natural for your dog. Gotcha. And I think, you know, you mentioned you've worked 10, you know, 10,000 hours, who knows how many dogs you've trained, probably thousands of dogs. Do you still get like, do, are you perfect at this point? Like, do you not make any mistakes or to kind of follow up with that? Do, is there something new that you learn every single day? Is there like, I mean, what's that like? I'm with your, at your level of expertise. Um, well, right now, I mean, the, the way we're able to, you know, train dogs and make a change is, you know, of course you gotta be able to have multiple people. So I have my team. Um, I think the main thing, I have to do is just make sure that I stay on top of, you know, cause my team is a product of me, you know, so I have to make sure my, my goal is to make sure I, you know, I work my trainers weekly. Um, we have what we call trainers training and, you know, we, we break it all the way down every, every, you know, 
every time and we make sure everybody's up to speed on what they're supposed to do. And I question, why did you do that? Well, why would you do that? What, well, you know, I'm making, we do these, these, these scenarios where, you know, you're they're role playing and they're dealing with different dogs and they have to answer questions. They have, you know, certain things that they have to be able to recite all of those dimensions of temperament it needs to flow off their tongue a certain way. You know, it's like they have to know what they're doing. And again, I can take 99 dog trainers and most you know, probably 10% would make the cut to actually understand and do what we're doing in Cali canine. So it's just a different level of understanding when my background comes from working dogs. So working with working dogs, you're dealing with another caliber of drive, another caliber of motivation, uh, another caliber of, of power, of, of threshold, and, you know, of, of, of confidence. I mean, all of these things. So, you know, a lot of times the, pe- the, the dogs that people are like saying they train are like a lot of times, uh, I get, you know, again, I'm sure you familiar with a little bit of a backlash that they try to bring because of using balanced training. Those dogs, a lot of times they're training are not what we're training and they don't understand it's not the same. It's like we can't compare apples to oranges. They're not the same, you know? So uh, our whole goal is really about acknowledging what kind of dog it is. And then from there, you figure out what route you're going to take. And is there ever a scenario where you're like, I don't think I can help this dog. Like, is if you no, no, no. Every dog can awesome. have a management. No, no, no. There's every dog can have some kind of direction. Now, certain dogs not, not, not might not be great at being dog park dogs. Not every dog is going to be the great candidate to have 20 kids running around. But we'll make that call and we'll say, okay, this dog should be in this kind of lifestyle in this kind of situation. It's probably the best. Yes, they'll be able to tolerate kids. Yes, they can tolerate dogs. But if they don't love dogs, I'm not going to put a little child in harm's way. You know what I mean? It's just not, it's not the serious. It'd be a different fit for someone else, you know? So, um, the key is, is just to, um, yeah, no, there's no bad dogs. There's no dogs that can't be trained. No dogs that can't have some kind of management program. I've never recommended euthanizing a dog. Uh, we fix them, you know, that's what it is. You know, and people don't want to hear I got to put my dog to sleep. Like that's the last thing you ever want to hear. So we got to figure out how we're going to do, it, but I got to ask them, are you ready to commit? And they say, yeah, I'm ready to commit. And then they're like, all right, Josh, show me the way. And then I, that's it. You just say, hey, cool. This is what you have to do. This is what you have to be on top of. These are the body language signs you have to read. This is what you can't do right away. You know, it's like you, you don't have the same freedom when you're in the middle of your training as your friends who have perfectly well-rounded dogs. You have to get the dog able to get to that stage. And it doesn't happen overnight, you know, and this is through education and through proper implementation on a daily basis. You know, and this is what we teach people. And what's the timeline on that usually like with your system? What's the, you know, getting it from like where, when the dog walks to the door to what, you know, kind of results you, you see, is that like a couple months or? Yeah. So, I mean, we have a 30 day program, a 60 day board and train program, uh, a 90 day board and train program. So it depends on what level of training, but then we also have our privacy and semi privacy and group classes. So with that situation, you will have the client come in for weekly visits and they practice and then they come in and they practice and they come. So basically it usually takes about three months. So it's definitely no overnight thing. We're not one of those places like you come in and our egos are on our, you know, on our shoulders saying, yeah, let's go ahead and fix the problem now. And it's like, we know that that's not the right solution, you know? So we'll make sure that, you know, we get the, uh, the step-by-step approach for that dog. That's cool. That's really cool. I like that. You know, the, the cookie cutter approach is never, uh, no, never the right different. way. Everybody's different. All dogs are different and we all need to have the proper procedure for us or anybody by individuals. Yeah. And like, what do you think, like to get to the point where you are now, I mean, um, you know, what do you, what has been one big struggle you've had to overcome? Right. Like, I mean, people are always like, you know, they just see the success, right? Like this guy who works with has the system Netflix show and all this other stuff. But like, I'm sure you had to like you, there were some obstacles you had to overcome along the way. What was one big obstacle that you had to face to get to where you're at now? I mean, I think it's just, you know, like I'm in the trenches. Like right now I'm at my kennels, you know, I drive here, you know, 50 minutes to get to my kennels and oversee my staff and check and see what's going on and run construction management. And it's just a lot. I mean, it's like, for me, I I, I like the grind. I like the, to, I like to build a team. I like the enterprise part of it. I like the, you know, I like the behavior and the results, but it's like now it's just at this point where it's like, how do we get, Kali K9 system to go like we want to get in uh, with the positive change program in the prisons and help a lot more rescue guys, uh, dogs and guys to get them everybody rehabilitated. So it's like, how do we scale this? You know, and the thing is, is it does take me to be there and, and, and micromanage my trainers. So it's like, but you know, my goal is I like want to create a school to where we can get more. It's not like for me, I've got everything I want. I want to make sure that like we're doing this for the dogs and, and you taking the euthanization rate and cut it in half. 
because far too many people are just put that dog to sleep because they're scared of it. Like I don't back off of dogs. I said, okay, he's tough. Okay, cool. Well, let me go ahead and deal with like approach it and respect him as a tough dog. I'm not going to sit there and go, I'm not, I'm too scared of him. I'm just going to take my time. You see what I mean? And his dog is nervous. Okay. Well, I got to be where I have to be to get this dog to trust me. But it's just like, you know, it, it takes time to, to get these type of uh, in, natural instincts as a trainer. And I think the goal is now just to, um, like I said, I'm, I'm in the trenches. So, you know, it's, it's, people see the show, but, you know, I'm cleaning up dog poop. I have dogs, you know, I have my own dogs. got to pay the bills. I have to pay all my workers. It's like, it's nonstop. You know, a lot of like my, my guy, one of my guys today, and he's, so he's like uh, working six days and he's like, man, I can't imagine you just that. And he's just like, you know, but this is what it comes with it. And I, thank God I have a great team from my admin staff all the way to all my trainers to my maintenance team. And we have to make sure dogs are healthy. We have to make sure, you know, dog clients are coordinating and getting with their trainers. And it's just so much to it. We have all of this, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of people reaching out from all over the world, um, wanting online training or whatever. So it's, it's, it's a lot, you know, it's, it's definitely, but I, I feel like I'm kind of, you know, I built myself up for this, you know, it's not over now. I've been doing this for a while and everything kind of steps up gradually. And, you know, the key is I have to be the pack leader of my team to make sure everything is done right. You know, so that's, that's really what it comes down to, you know, it's, it's, it's way bigger than me at this point. I have a family and my kids. So yeah, you got to make sure you have a balanced lifestyle, you know, your friends, you know, people to, you know, you go off thinking you Mr. Hollywood. It's like, nah, I'm still Joss, you know? <laughs> That's so cool, man. I love that down to earth attitude. And you kind of touched on it a little bit, but like how has dog training made you a better leader, just a better person? Has it? I mean, how, like what, what's been one takeaway there? Well, the cool thing about like, I try to like correlate like the, you know, discipline, my own discipline and my own consistencies. And like what I ask for the dog, you know, you have to do that as yourself, you know what I mean? And in, in, in that balanced lifestyle you have to have for yourself, you know? So I try to incorporate my spirituality to make sure that I am, you know, being balanced and just kind of taking away what I teach the dog and then try to teach that to my friends and then teaching that to the kids and, you know, my nonprofit and getting that, everybody to kind of see things from kind of like that kind of goggles and just having that balance, creating that, that, that motivation, taking motivation and figuring out what's your motivation to keep you going. A lot of people suffer from depression and they end up going to alcoholism and drugs and a lot of things like that. And it's like, we have to kind of tackle ourselves. We have to tackle our problem. We have to, you know what I mean? It's, it's a fight, you know, and life is real. And uh, I think that uh, if you can see a dog can come out of it, then a person can come out of it. We have so much more willpower and ability. And I think it's really tapping into the, to the, the, the inner, you know, a, a beast in you to be, you know, to crush it in life, you know, because, you know, some people are just getting, you know, life is crushing them and it sucks because, you know, a lot of times it's just a mind state and mind frame. And then some people like, you know, they, they, they have like a mentality that they all they have to do is just change the way they think, change the, 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 the direction and how they think. And it's like the whole life can turn around. So I think all of that, man, I think I just, it's so much bigger than dogs, man. It's so much bigger than dogs, but it's dope that the dogs is like a way that I can like link with people. And then from there it builds, you know? So that's like the seed of like my ability to help. And then the, the, the person and their dog. And then all of a sudden, like, you don't know what that relationship can blossom into. So that's the, that's the beautiful part. It's a people connection, a dog connection, life connection, crazy world we're living in. So it's just, uh, we're just trying to get good love into the world and uh, help as many people out in the process. Man, that's so cool. And that's kind of what I was going to ask was, it was like, Man, how do you, you know, you're on the grind all the time. You you have to have that thing that kind of pushes you to keep going. And it sounds like that kind of answered my question. So perfect. And kid, you know, my kid, man, my, my son, Jasir, you know, I got a dope wife. You know, I got, you know, it's like a dope family dynamic and, and home dynamic. So it's like that at home, live home, friends, you know, it's like just balancing, you know, it's just like trying to keep, uh, you know, and I get stressed out, it's like, making sure I'm keeping those things that keep me happy in the mix. So I don't, you know, get too, too freaked out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, we all, everybody's struggling. And my last interview lady says, you know, talking about the celebrities. And it's just like celebrities just like us, you know, it's just for all people just, you know, living that life day by day, you know, our parents pass away, our friends, you know, screw us over all kinds of things can happen and everybody, you know what I mean? So for them, it's definitely hard because they have such a, a, a you know, a spotlight on them, you know, or just being, you know, kind of, face in the public scene, you know, so you, you always got to be on your best behavior and it's just stressful. You know, everybody wants to do the right thing. And man, that's some, that's some advice right there. That's, that's what's up, you know, kind of close out here. What are some plans that 
uh, for you, you kind of talked about like setting up this school. What are some goals that you kind of see for canine intervention, you know, maybe this year and, and maybe going, you know, a year in the future, right? Like a couple of years down the road, where do you kind of want to take this? Well, I mean, I, my show has kind of, you know, kind of been a great uh, um, platform to, you know, showcase what we do, uh, but we do have nonprofit in the mix where we power the youth uh, and get them on the, on the road to, you know, financial literacy and, and just balanced lifestyle. Um, and then also we have a tour where we're gonna, you know, try to cover about 30 city tour in the next two years, um, going taking Cali, Cali Canine as a seminar and a workshop. Uh, then we also have our online stuff we're doing and um, yeah, trying to, you know, we've, you know, opportunities with military and customs and <laughs> so much stuff with dogs, man, it doesn't stop. So really, I'm just like, you know, building my team with really do, doing things with uh, online and, you know, making some partnerships with some really cool brands who are, you know, spreading the right message. They said we're working with the Zach from Positive Change and we're interested in getting into the prisons and empower some of their training programs to, um you know, get more trainers out there and get more more of offenders uh, rehabilitated and remotivated. Yep. So that's that kind of stuff, man. We just all it's all in the woodworks, man. We all just we're just chopping away at it every day. So I love it, man. I love it. Like big, big goals, big mission. And where can people find you at? Uh, you know, what's your website, social media, stuff like that? Yeah. So everything's pretty much Cali Canine, um, Cali Canine on TikTok. On Instagram, uh, YouTube, you just Google Cali Canine. I think it's Cali Canine Solutions on uh, YouTube. And then we have our free Facebook group. Then we have our, a live training that we do on, on uh, Mondays and Fridays where we do just 15 minutes a day. We're just encouraging the whole 15 minutes a day lifestyle, uh, training your dog. And then you can go, of course, go Cali Canine for, uh, dot com for our merch and online training and all to book appointments and stuff. Awesome. And everything will be in the link in the description below on whatever platform you're listening on. Seriously, thank you so much for coming on. I feel like I learned a lot. Uh, great episode. Thanks again, man. Sure. All right, man. Take care. God bless.